growing up, you know, most kids drew snow forts or drew bicycles. I always, always drew cars. I enjoyed looking at photos of cars and what made a car look like a car, the lighting, the reflections, the shape, the form, the proportions, the wheels. So I would do my best to find photographs anywhere. And, and originally I started off using uh, quarters and nickels and dimes and pennies to draw the wheels in the side view. And then I based the car off of that. I have the original rendering that I did when I was three and a half, four years old. Of uh, My mom gave it to me a few years ago. It was a blue and red tow truck. But it's always been part of my life. It just always has been. And I was able, by the time I was, again, four, I was pretty much accurately uh, describing every car that was on the road. I could say, that's a Ford Escort, or that's a Ford pickup truck, or that's a, you know, that's a Chevy Citation. And uh, my dad, my dad said, he, you know, he's right. He looked over at my mom and said, yeah, he's right. <laughs> and I ended up going to Wentworth Institute of Technology in Boston, and it all worked out, and I did, took product design, and I loved it. And we started off with 128 kids in the industrial design uh, department. By the time I graduated, there was only five of us in the class, and I was the only one that got an uh, uh, industrial design job. Back in 2004, I started uh, drawing these for people at car shows, and people liked my work, and then more work, got more work, and word of mouth spread. And I joined a few forums, I showed off my work, and I started getting hired for stuff. Well, by the time 2008 came around, the amount of workload that pretty much doubled what I was doing during my regular product design job. I was working 40, 50 hours a week. I didn't sleep, and by 2008, I, I, I decided that I'd go off on my own. I realized that I liked cars when I was a little boy. My dad had a 74 Trans Am, highly modified black with the uh, gold bird. It was a four-speed manual transmission. And I vividly remember a Stingray, a chrome bumper Stingray coming up next to him. And there was a little bit of banter back and forth between my dad and this guy at the stoplight. And a little bit of a rumble over there and a little bit of a rumble from our side. The light changed and we obliterated that Stingray. From there it went to reading car magazines and eventually following in his footsteps and getting into the car business. And one day um, we got together and what we noticed and the trend in the market was the people that seemed to be passionate about their cars were the people that would put aftermarket accessories on their cars when they bought it new. So he left what he was doing and I left what I was doing. We came together and we created a company and ultimately ended up in 27 magazines. A handful of our cars ended up on seven covers nationally. The majority of our focus was always on high performance, uh, handling, you know, the actual experience of driving the car and less on styling. But uh, we got into a couple of situations where we had customers that wanted as much show as they were getting go. I eventually stumbled across um, the fact that you could actually hire a designer to design your vehicle before it's ever even built. And I worked with a couple of designers. And in flipping through magazines, I eventually came across this Dodge Charger. Cannibal, and uh, the designer was Ben Hermans. I had designed a 72 Charger concept with a number of different modifications, and it was put in popular hot rodding. And the car was absolutely stunning, beautiful. And he had the same style that I have. Clean the car up, keep all the original things that are great about the car, but get rid of the clutter, and I got a call from Tony Stevenson, uh, probably within a couple months of that coming out being published. And he said, I've got a project uh, that I'd love for you to work on. I love that 72 Charger Cannibal. And I want you to work on uh, a GTO Judge. And that was a collaboration with myself, Ben, my father, uh, Jim Wangers. And it was in honor of the uh, anniversary that was coming up in 2009 for the Pontiac GTO. Tony said he wanted to develop some body enhancements on it that didn't look out of place, that were proportional, didn't make the car look like a circus, and accented all of the right places. So we worked together for months and months on that particular project. Ben and I spent a lot of time talking with Jim and getting the fundamentals of what Jim thought that absolutely needed to be 
there from the original concept. And we developed a series of wheels uh, <laughs> because the wheels that were scheduled to go on it, we didn't feel helped the car. So we got together uh, on a design and I felt it was, it made a lot of sense to develop a wheel that was based on a popular heritage wheel from Pontiac. So we created these Rally 2 style forged three-piece wheels. As soon as that car hit, people loved it, loved the wheels, loved the design. And ultimately, that was one of the most publicized cars that Big Three ever built. After the GTO project, Ben and I had been speaking about a couple of ways that we could get back together and figure out another project. We had so much success on the GTO, we had to do something else. Through several conversations, I had said I wanted to start a new brand. He kind of felt he wanted to do something. Ben and I had gone back and forth on a couple other business ideas, and ultimately we landed on um, wheels. Doing this uh, as a job, you realize you know, you, you're kind of the, the bridge or the liaison between the owner and the builder, and then you have to deal with what their preferences are on wheels, and you get to hear what people are saying about wheels and I had a lot of ideas and one thing led to another and I showed them some concepts on the wheels. Everybody loves the quality of a forged three-piece wheel, especially in the pro touring and the performance market. The particular market that I've always been involved with, with the uh, kind of modified muscle cars and, and street rods and um, you know, older hot rods and, and low riders and whatnot, you know, I I liked I liked a lot of the the forged wheels. They were they're great looking, but they needed a little bit more heritage. Ultimately, it came to the grip equipped line of wheels. We were looking at so many different wheel brands and manufacturers. We could have gone with a number of different wheel manufacturers. But ultimately, we landed on Forge Line. It's our passion. I mean, I've grown up with wheels and cars my entire life. I love making a set of wheels and seeing it on a car somewhere in my travels, seeing cars win on the racetrack. I live it I, and I love it. It's a, it's a part of it. It's just a part of our family. Our dad used to take us to the track when, when he was running and he was racing and uh, Steve and I both got the racing bug and when we got to the age that we were able to drive, uh, we started to do some amateur stuff and noticed the need for uh, custom made racing wheels. It was actually Steve uh, started the business. I had had an, another wheel distribution business at that point in time. There weren't necessarily a lot of brands back then, and some of the brands that you, that you could buy were very difficult to buy. They didn't have the correct sizes, uh, very long lead times, that type of stuff. And so we wanted to make custom-made racing wheels that are available to anyone at, at a decent price and, uh, and, and at a good service level. So we started with a two-piece welded wheel uh, designed for race cars, and then People that had race cars wanted wheels for their street cars, and then people in the street wanted their street cars to look like race cars they had seen on the track, so we started to make street wheels. We've incorporated everything we've learned on the track uh, into all of our wheels, including our street wheels. Every part of the wheel is, is sourced in the USA, and it's obviously manufactured here in Dayton, Ohio. All the finishing, all the machining, you know, every single part of the wheel is made in the USA. And even today, our, our motorsports business is about 50% uh, of our business, and the street side is 50% as well. And it's kind of remained that way since the beginning. And when I had a wheel distributorship, uh, we were selling other people's brands of wheels. And it was always very frustrating to get, to get anything warrantied or get anything, any kind of service on anything. Our service, in my opinion, is second to none. To be able to actually warranty a product is a beautiful thing. I was at a pro touring event talking with Bill Howe, and he wanted to introduce me to Ben Hermance. Uh, said he had some ideas on uh, potentially a wheel line, had some wheel designs he wanted to show me. I've had nothing but excellent experience with any of my clients dealing with Forge Line. They've always been very happy, and I've always liked their wheels. I've always liked their fit and finish. So me and Ben met at SEMA last year, and he showed me some of those designs. Um, let me know that Tony was going to be a part of the program. I have a high regard and respect for what Tony's done in the automotive industry in the past. We got together with Dave Shard at Forge Line. We showed him some designs. Dave has a, a lot of the same passions that uh, both Ben and I have. He's raced professionally. He's all about his product. 
He cares about customer service, and I mean genuinely cares. I loved what Ben had to offer uh, and lo loved the designs. Uh, we put some things down on a napkin and uh, on a handshake and announced it at the Pro Touring dinner that night uh, that we were going to forge a partnership and Grip Equipped was, was born. My job is to take it from rendering to finished product. I'll set up the manufacturing plan, I'll do the design work, the FEA testing, do all the machine programming, the process, and give it to the shop to, to actually make the wheel. We were able to uh, put our touch on their wheels to make sure they're safe, uh, strong, um, very high quality, above all quality. The designs and what needed to be done machining-wise was so different than we had done on our stuff. And there were a lot of things that we had to do on our side to make, make both things work together. Ben was easy to work with. When we said that we needed to change this or we couldn't do this, Ben was very receptive and so he would send us back ideas, well, how about this? So we did a lot of give and take on the designs. And now, now we've got really good designs that I think uh, Ben's happy with, and Anthony's happy with, and we're happy with. So. He let us handle the technical part of it, and was very respectful of that, and obviously we wanted to uh, make sure his vision came to reality as well. Collaboratively, we, uh, I think we were a success. There is no compromise with having these forged wheels that Forge Line's producing for us. We were able to find the best manufacturer to do this and they have the same philosophy for it's no compromise. That's what we needed. It's always about the function for us. Our wheels are very functional uh, and always have been. Uh, what we're enjoying with Ben a little bit and the grip equipped stuff is it's more about the design. I looked around at the popular wheel styles growing up in the 50s, 60s, 70s uh, and even the 80s. There's wheels in, that I designed that are taken from uh, designs that you've seen in the 80s. And I kind of merged all of these things, stirred it in a big pot and said, okay, what, what do we have here? Obviously our heritage is in racing. So everything we focus on is based on racing. And obviously they're still gonna be functional and that's why Forge Line's making the wheels and that's why Ben wants us to make the wheels. They're, you know, it's about the function there, but his designs for the most part are more about the design than our designs have ever been. All of the technology and all of the benefits of having a forged wheel and applying them and, and adding some heritage characteristics and styling and styling cues and inspiration from past racing wheels, um, from cars you would not believe that we got them from. We get a, a new designer with new ideas. That'll be exciting for everyone to see new wheels different than anything they've seen. Obviously, we have a very large fan base. We have a lot of people that really like our designs. But uh, the great thing about wheels and cars is that everybody has different tastes. And uh, I think the grip designs are going to reach a completely different audience that, uh, that we hadn't reached before. Uh, somebody that's looking for something a little bit different or something in that retro type look. Um, and we look forward to uh, meeting an entire new customer base. One of the things that Ben and I had spoken about was how he usually has to show renderings of his vehicles to his customers in several different colors before they can decide on what kind of paint they're going with. So many times people end up going to a, a wheel website and they're looking through their wheels and there's a list of all the different finishes, but there's no pictures to go with it. And then there's options of, well, you can two-tone it this way or you can change it this way. But again, no pictures. So what we came up with was our, our wheel visualizer module, which literally allows you to build the wheel as you would want it sent to your doorstep. You can change the powder coat color. You can change the wheel, the rim itself. You can change the register, whether you want a brushed finish, a high-tech machine finish, whether you're going with a step lip, a smooth lip, whether you have hidden hardware, exposed hardware, it lets you build exactly what's going to come to your doorstep. The visualizer itself is so true to the end product 
that you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between what you've designed online versus what shows up at your house. I've always admired Ben's designs, uh, his renderings, some of the stuff that he does, it's uh, absolutely amazing. But he has gotten us to look at, at things in a different way. We've had to figure out how we're going to machine that and how are we going to do this. And he's kind of pushed us uh, to do some of that stuff, which is good. It's getting us to think outside the box. So all of us having that same goal and drive and passion behind what we do really made a lot of sense to get together. And it's been a great venture, a great experience with Dave and, and Todd and the guys at Forge Line. After over a year's time invested from both Forge Line Motorsports and Grip Equipped, CAD designs, renderings, uh, finite analysis, all the hard work from everybody involved, I can't tell you how excited we are to actually introduce these wheels. I think that the team we've put together, we have a lot to offer. I'd like to think that I was an advocate for um, you know, the automotive enthusiasts and a voice at some point. Right now, I'm, I'm happy just designing wheels and designing people's cars. What excites me is, is Ben's ideas. I have a feeling just from uh, talking with Ben and seeing what he's already uh, given us that there, there's a whole lot more behind these designs that, that, that we haven't even seen the tip of the iceberg of what Ben, ben has on his mind. And uh, you know, hopefully he comes up with the, the next new thing in wheels. I think it's very possible just based on what we've seen already.